Hi guys, welcome to the latest video here at Cricket Draft Insight. I hope that you enjoyed the opening few days of the County Championship campaign, that you racked up lots of points, and you're looking forward to game week two commencing on Thursday. Today, I'd like to talk about Durham batter Graham Clark. I previously tweeted about Clark. He's got a reasonable list A record, but only averages about 25 in first class cricket. He didn't feature at all in the longest format last season. However, I noticed that he was playing for Durham on their pre-season tour of Zimbabwe, and though they were primarily white ball matches, I thought he was in with a good shout of commencing the county championship campaign in their 11. I found Clark's performance and how many points he accrued in Durham's opening county championship game against Sussex quite eye-opening. The 30-year-old batter registered scores of 47 and 1. That might not sound too impressive, but the 47 he made from 52 deliveries. He didn't actually hit any 4s, but he struck 6 6s. So he got 47 points for his innings, as well as 1 in the second, and he got 36 points for hitting 6 6s. He also got a bonus 25 points for his strike rate. That took him up to 109 points. He actually also took a catch in each innings. Had he managed another 3 runs quickly, he would have also got another... 25 bonus points for registering a half century, taking them up to 137 points. I've been championing the value of batters who bowl. David Lloyd didn't do a lot with the bat, but he picked up a wicket for me. Daniel Bell Drummond made a couple of starts, but did at least pick up a couple of wickets. But across the board, batters who bowl seem quite scarce this season. So how else can we pick up points? A slow hundred's great. But batters who score quickly, acquiring points for strike rate and six hitting, can be of great value. Of course, we'd like them to go on to really big scores. Ed Pollock is an example of somebody who tends to score quickly but doesn't always go on. Sol Budinger is one to keep an eye on. He seemed to score his runs quickly for Leicestershire. But like Clark, can they go on to make really substantial innings and really impact our place in the standings? That said... Clark made 48 runs across the two innings and acquired 109 batting points. I don't necessarily expect him to strike six sixes in every innings, but his points total does display the value of scoring runs quickly. As it stands, I'm umming and ahhing between Clark and Cameron Steele for a place in my team for game week two. I brought Cameron Steele in at the last minute for game week one. He's my type of player, slightly left field, He's a batter, but he can bowl. Typically, I left him on my bench, and he scored 141 not out, as well as taking a wicket, though he's quite expensive in the second inning, so that kind of cancelled that out. I know a lot of people have concern about batters batting down the order. I'm not too concerned about that. I think that offers a level of protection, actually. Steele Surrey face an extremely strong Hampshire attack in game week two. Again, he's maybe got protection down the order, but that also means he could be facing the new ball. Clark's Durham face a decent Worcestershire attack in week two, one that includes one of my stars from week one, Matthew Waite. You might like to check out my player profile video on him. I'm actually leaning towards selecting Clark this week and leaving Steele on my bench again. As much as I value Steele's qualities, surely Lightning can't strike twice. He's not going to score a century against such a strong Hampshire attack, is he? And with wet weather on the horizon, is his bowling really set to have much of an impact? Of course, no doubt if I leave him out, he'll strike another century. Please let me know in the comments section who you think I should pick. Man of Steel or Clark Kent? Or do I mean Clark Durham?